So place your left hand and then raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Eric Lander. I, Eric Lander. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance and to allegiance the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter upon which I am about to enter so help me God so help me God congratulations <laughs> Mr. Director. congratulations there we are thank you there we are. thank you thank you. thank you here let's take a photograph and then dr. Lander will you please share with us this beautiful sacred book upon which you have taken your oath. Will you talk to us about uh, it? Um, I would love to. This comes from the Library of Congress and it has a really interesting story. Um, for me, in thinking about a, an, an oath of office, I thought about values. and What are my values, the administration's values? What are we all here trying to do? And there's a very special concept in Jewish tradition called tikkun olam, the repairing of the world. And we're all called upon to repair the world, whatever religion or tradition we, we come from. But there's a specific line that comes in, in, the, in the Jewish tradition that contains that obligation. And it's right here at this point on this page. It says, we don't have to finish the work, but we may not refrain from doing that work, the work of repairing the world. And so that line comes from um, the compilation of an oral tradition 1,800 years ago in a particular book uh, in that Mishnah, a book called Pirkei Avot. And this special edition was the, from the first Mishnah, the first compilation of the oral tradition ever printed on a printing press, just a few decades after Gutenberg's Bible, by a printer in Na the kingdom of Naples in the year 1492. Mm. And 1492 is special in Jewish tradition because it was the year the Jews were expelled from the kingdom of Spain. And at the same time, a printer is printing in the kingdom of Naples. Mm. Spain and Naples, they were both ruled by cousins, both named Ferdinand. And one started the Spanish Inquisition mm. and the other started a haven for tolerance. And so this book speaks in many ways to the work of this administration of repairing the world, building back better, I think is a modern <laughs> version of repairing the world. Um, it speaks about tolerance and intolerance. Um, and it also speaks about one other thing I, I have to say, which is this book was not known to exist until about 10 years ago when a Hebraic scholar at the Library of Congress, who is standing right back there, Dr. Ann Brenner, found it and recognized that it was a text from 1492 rather than something much more recent. And uh, it's only because of her scholarship that it got entered into the catalog of the Library of Congress. And when I was looking for a Mishnah that I could find it. And so the book also talks about the amazing people who work as servants for the public in the United States. And so all of those things are bound up in just this 13-page fragment of this 500-year-old book. And it means a lot to me about why we're all here doing this work. So thank you. Congratulations. I'll be meeting uh, at the front leg of the trip with the president of Guatemala, Giamate, and we have a lot to discuss. Uh, it is about what we need to do and can do together to both support the folks who need help in terms of hunger, the economic development piece, the extreme weather, and, and the impact that has had on their economy. But it's also about having very frank and, and honest conversations about the need to address corruption, um, to address crime, uh, violence, and in particular against some of the most vulnerable populations in that country. 
Um, but I will bring to that conversation also um, to bear on this conversation the work that we've done so far here, meeting with and bringing together CEOs, for example, who are prepared to renew or, or to, to begin a relationship with Guatemala. I will bring to bear on this conversation the meetings that we've had with civil society both in the U.S. and there in terms of the need, again, to address long-standing issues um, that relate to disparities in the country. Uh, we will bring to bear on the conversation the, the commitment that various members of our administration are making through their agencies as cabinet secretaries to renew and in many cases to upgrade the kind of resources that we are committing to that region to address the root causes. And Do that at its core is what it is. Are What's that? It's going to be an, an honest and, and real conversation. So I do. I'm, I'm there to listen as much as I am to share um, perspective. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.